Okay, now we are going to understand the differences between anti-mortem contusion and post-mortem contusion. How we are going to understand that this blunt injury was before the death or after death? This contusion has formed before the death of a person when he was alive or after the death of a person. So we can do the different examination. Always understand that vital reactions will be seen only in anti-mortem contusion. Where a person is alive, so there you can see swelling, there you can see inflammations and edema, right? So vital reactions and inflammation. So vital reactions and inflammation, this will be seen in anti-mortem contusion. This will be absent in post-mortem. So when I talk about swelling, obviously this will be seen in anti-mortem. See, when a person is alive, after the blunt hit, size of contusion will be big. It will be more. It will be small in post-mortem. What about color changes? I have taught you that after the blunt hit, there will be rupture of a small blood vessels. After that, internally, there will be extra vessation of blood. Whenever there will be extra vessation of blood, there will be rupture of RBCs, right? After that, there will be further breakdown of hemoglobin into hemocytrine. Then bilirubin, then bilirubin. So from day 1 to day 14, different different color will be there. So when I ask you, color changes will be seen in anti-mortem bruise or post-mortem bruise. Do remember, bruise and contusions are same thing. Fine. So color changes will be seen in anti-mortem, not in post-mortem. Now, what about the margins? If a person is alive and when there was the blunt hit, see, margin can diffuse into surroundings. But post-mortem contusion will be seen only over the dependent parts where there is the bony prominence. Fine. So here, margin will be clear cut in post-mortem contusion. But in anti-mortem, margin will get diffused into the surroundings. What about the uniformity of color? Always remember that as we have learned that since day 1 to day 14, there will be changes in color. Whenever you are going to see the margin and the complete color. In a living person or in anti-mortem contusion, Color will not completely be uniform. In between, it will be pale. At center, it will be yellow color. But it will completely be uniform in post-mortem from beginning to last. What about enzyme levels? If you do the examination, where there will be vital reactions, you can see that there can be rays of enzymes also in anti-mortem contusion. When you do microscopic examination, after the extravasation of blood, you can see that blood cells are infiltrated into the nearby tissues in anti-mortem, not in post-mortem. So, on microscopic examination, blood cells will be infiltrated in nearby tissues, but it will not be seen in post-mortem contusion. What about blood? What about blood? Since in anti-mortem contusion or when a person was alive, at that time, clotting system was completely normal. Platelets were completely functioning. So when the platelets were functioning, do you think there will be normal clotting? Yes, there will be normal clotting. So if there is clotting, do you think you can easily wash it off? No. So in anti-mortem contusion, blood cannot be easily washed away. But post-mortem contusion, since there is no clotting system, since platelets are not working normally, 
so in post mortem contusion blood can easily be washed away i hope all these points are clear to all of you so far we have learned about abrasions and contusions now we are going to learn about lacerations do remember abrasion contusion and lacerations these are examples of blunt injury not the sharp cut trauma so after the application of any hard object like a stone like a rod when i take the example of this lock this is made of iron this is very very heavy when i am going to hit someone with this lock like this so don't you think there can be rupture of there can be split of skin underlying mucous membrane or maybe underlying tissues after that there